Yo, did you see that uh, Russia invaded Ukraine today? What? Really? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, I saw it on my phone while I was eating lunch. Damn, let me take a look. With the recent advances in information technology having massive impacts on all aspects of society, it is no surprise that information technology has had both a positive and negative impact on the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. When was the last time you saw a headline about the Ukrainian war? I bet you see one every week on one of many social media platforms. Social media has undeniably played a large role in modern warfare, and the Russo-Ukrainian war is no exception. During the Euro Maiden, the Russian government used social media to spread misinformation and propaganda about the new government in Kyiv and pro-Western demonstrators. This eventually led to the annexation of Crimea, with many misinformed Ukrainians even beginning to support secession from Ukraine. In 2022, social media is still a rampant tool used by the Russian government for spreading misinformation during the invasion of Ukraine. Fake Twitter accounts have been used to spread lies that Ukraine was fabricating civilian casualties with the use of fake videos. However, social media has had its benefits as well. Many displaced families and friends are still able to communicate and check in on each other through social media. Also, capturing images of warfare and sharing them is easier than ever. Ukrainian citizens and soldiers have all essentially become war journalists, and people from all over the world are more aware about the atrocities of war being committed by the Russian government. Citizens of other countries have been vocal in pushing their country to support Ukraine, which has led to 45 countries providing military aid to Ukraine. We can all relate to the impact that social media has had on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, as it allows us to follow along with the day-to-day -day events of the war. But in terms of information technology's impact, it is just a tip of the iceberg. Modern warfare, also known as fourth generation of warfare, is approached in two ways. Firstly, political and social activities to support the physical efforts and net-centric warfare, increasing the technological capabilities of historical military power such as weapons. We will study the impacts of information technology on both approaches, starting with the political and social activities. The changing nature of modern warfare has large implications on international relations. Today, warfare involves technologies such as cyber intelligence, drones, and surveillance. For a country that would traditionally be predicted to crumble under Russian attack, Ukraine is successfully fending them off. Ukraine was able to withstand Russian aggression through their cyber capabilities. Ukraine combined cyber tactics and aid from Western nations, including the supply of technologies and equipment training. Cyber capabilities allow nations to contribute in ways not limited to military and manpower. For example, Finland and Sweden, despite smaller militaries, were quick to side with NATO during the Ukraine war, offering advanced cyber capabilities on the other hand, cyber capabilities can further weaken international relationships of foes by engagement of offensive tactics like DDoS attacks, phishing, and intelligence theft. Cyber warfare has become just as important a facet of war as traditional military activity. This has been an area of specific focus in Ukraine as both Russia and Ukraine have ex executed cyber attacks to damage critical online infrastructure. In March 2022, Russia completed its attack on the last functioning cell tower in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol. Targeting critical IT infrastructure is devastating to a city as it prevents the ability for communication. Citizens cannot communicate with one another regarding their safety during active warfare if their ability to use their cell phones and the internet has been compromised. The knowledge of locations of bombing and threats could be crucial in saving lives, but cyber warfare makes this communication impossible at times. Ukraine in turn has recruited a voluntary IT army as Russia increases the intensity of their cyber attacks. There was no formal cyber division of Ukraine's army until the dual nature of this war made it imperative. Cyber attacks have tried to disrupt operations and have been especially useful when peddling misinformation and organizing potential attacks. For instance, the Russian-backed disinformation campaigns to weaken public support and undermine the Ukrainian government. IT plays an important role in security intelligence services activity, monitoring and counteracting these threats. A government must protect its people and national security agencies should be able to harness the power of IT to do so, such as how those in Ukraine and her allies have been doing effectively in the Russia-Ukraine war. This might include gathering and analyzing cyber data, such as social media, online forums, and electronic communications, in order to identify potential security threats and take appropriate actions to mitigate them. That said, there are still concerns around privacy and civil liberties to be balanced with the need for gathering effective intelligence. Security agencies should only be allowed to collect information relevant to national security with a specific reason, rather than indiscriminate surveillance. For example, 
Canada CSE uses data-driven rather than suspicion-led surveillance, harnessing algorithms and computing power to find patterns in communications, leading to actionable intelligence. The United States and China have become increasingly competitive, and tech is a sector that is at the forefront of that competition. They compete in technologies such as AI, 5G, cybersecurity, renewable energies, and more. In some areas, this has been productive, such as the rush to create better clean energy technologies. Many of the areas of competition, though, involve the military, with the integration of digital technologies in weapons and systems. In fact, we are already seeing the United States restricting China's access to modern semiconductor technology for fear of its use in the Chinese military. This is also spilled into the context of the Russia-Ukraine war, where the U.S. has been a staunch supplier of weapons into Ukraine. They have provided vital technological aid to Ukraine, including key intelligence via their advanced satellites and surveillance systems. Other American organizations have also been important. For example, SpaceX provided Ukraine with needed internet access through Starlink. Indeed, the access to Starlink was crucial for the Ukrainian drone division Aero Rozvitka to launch successful strikes against Russian forces. While China has not decisively backed its ally Russia in the conflict, it has sent non-lethal equipment to it. China has, however, studied the way technology is shaping the conflict and how effectively it can be used in a war situation. Papers published by Chinese military researchers stated it was paramount, quote, to find ways to shoot down or disable Starlink, end quote. Big tech was also studied for its role in influencing the public as people shared their experiences online, causing a massive surge of support for Ukraine. The effectiveness of American drones were also noted, among others. This may have massive ramifications for society, as companies may become more beholden to the interests of national governments. The Ukraine-Russia war has provided a testing ground for both the U.S. and China to see how to integrate technology into their military and how they can compete against each other, and especially for China's ambitions to reunite with a staunch American ally, Taiwan. Having discussed the political aspects of the war in Ukraine, we will now shift to the net-centric warfare. That is in the invasion of Ukraine, drones have been making a significant impact. Ukraine's air power mostly consists of drones, which is a first for a large nation. Since drones are much more cost-effective compared to manned aircraft, the use of air power in modern warfare has changed. Countries with weaker militaries are now able to engage effectively in aerial warfare. Additionally, Drones have been used for exploring dangerous areas, such as bombed-out apartments. Ukraine has been using these methods for locating and reaching victims. Drones have also provided a means for journalists to report on the war from a safer distance. On the other hand, drones have been used during the war to commit war crimes. Russia has been launching airstrikes on civilians with the use of drones for the purpose of intimidating citizens. Russia has also used drones to launch airstrikes on critical energy infrastructure, which left many Ukrainians without electricity and heating during cold winter months. Since these attacks are much cheaper and come with less risk, countries may be more inclined to commit atrocities such as these. Bad actors will always use whatever information technology is at their disposal to further their goals, so it is important to be prepared to deal with that inevitability. The impact of drone strikes in Ukraine has already been severe. As the volume of drone strikes increases, it becomes more and more difficult to defend against the assault without autonomous weaponry. So much so that Ukraine's Minister of Digital Information considers it logical and inevitable. Does it scare you that an autonomous weapon could end your life in a split-second decision without any human input? There are already guidelines set by the United Nations regarding the development of autonomous weapons. These include straightforward ideals such as international humanitarian law continues to apply fully to autonomous weapon systems and humans must always be responsible for the actions of autonomous weapon systems. Unfortunately, as sensible as these ideas are, they are not legally binding. Defensive measures against autonomous weapons need to be developed to protect against the inevitability of autonomous weapons that may harm civilians. COVID never had a massive impact on the war, but President Zelensky referred to the Russian invasion as COVID-22 and called weapons and sanctions a vaccine for Ukraine. Just this morning, China announced they would be sending drones, body armor, and rifles to Russia, while Poland and Slovakia promised MiG-29s to Ukraine. It will be very interesting to continue to follow the impacts of information technology as the war evolves.